What's up guys, this is Jesse Corby. I am the creative director and one of the co-founders here at Jewelers Advantage. And today we've got an exciting presentation for you. We've all been talking about the Jewelers Advantage AI tool that you're all going to get access to. And today I wanted to do a brief presentation to demystify a little bit of what this can do. There's no way I'll be able to show everything the tool can do today because it's an ocean. It'll probably take me hundreds of videos to do that. But I wanted to start at the place where it makes the most sense to start, which is what can this tool do for you and how can we start thinking correctly for how to use this? So today's topic is the AI revolution for jewelry is here. So before we get into the tool and looking at what that can do, I already prepared some really cool stuff for you to see. Let's zoom way, way out for a second, because unless you've been living under a rock, you know that something is up in the diamond market. And you'll hear a lot about how the value is collapsing on natural diamonds and that in my opinion, that's very likely to happen. So then the question will be, what's going to happen to the jewelry industry in general? What's going to happen to jewelers like you? And what's going to happen with customers? Because human beings have been adorning ourselves for thousands of years. I don't think that's going to stop. It's just going to be the story and the meaning that we assign to things and the way that we decide that things mean something to us humans, that's going to change. So. Gone are the days of the commodity sale of a piece of jewelry being the primary driver of its value. What does that mean? It means that the idea of being able to say, hey, this is a fancy diamond and some gold. Wow, that means it's valuable. That's a commodity type sale. That's going to be over. So what's going to replace it? The answer is brand storytelling. Gen Z doesn't necessarily care a ton about diamonds, but they do care about brands and the stories those brands tell and the way that those brands form a relationship to connect with the person buying from them. So you're going to need to learn how to do that. And what is going to become the most important thing is that when everybody is selling lab diamonds and everybody essentially has the same materials because luckily metals aren't getting devalued, when everybody has the same basic canvas to paint with, how do you communicate your creative vision to a customer that drives emotion and gets them to buy the way they used to? Well, you're going to have to fill in some gaps in your own knowledge and you're going to have to have a really, really comprehensive strategy to get there. You're going to have to all of a sudden not be leaning on the value of the materials to sell your product. You're going to have to become a real creative director of your brand and think like a real CEO. Well, luckily for you, we've got the tool that is going to be able to do that. So let me jump over to what I've prepared for you today. We are looking at the Jewelers Advantage AI tool. I've showed a lot of you what this is all about, DMs and things like that. Bear with me also, this presentation is not necessarily all about production value. This is about getting in here and showing you guys real value that you can use. So not a ton of fancy bells and whistles, but I don't think you guys came for that today anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you what a thread looks like. I already prepared something so that we wouldn't have to watch the AI populate. You'll get to have the experience with that and it's magic watching it all unfold. But today I wanted to zoom way out, make it not so much of a tech demonstration, but let's all put our thinking caps on instead and be strategic thinkers. This is like the art of war. We have to think like real business minds and think of how we're going to position your brand and make it a unique special thing in the market. So quick couple of notes about the tool. I'm going to get into this later on as far as the technical stuff about what this tool is, but all you really need to know for right now is that it's essentially built on top of ChatGPT. If you've heard of what ChatGPT is, it's an amazing AI tool. What this does beyond the typical GPT-4 setting in ChatGPT is that we've trained this model on an extensive knowledge base on everything from Fortune 500 business growth frameworks to very, very specific best practices in the luxury and jewelry industry. So what that means for you is that you don't need to become a prompt engineer. There's this field or discipline or skill set 
called prompt engineering, which you may or may not have heard of, which essentially means that you have to become the horse whisperer to the AI to get it to do real magic. That's why you're going to hear a difference in opinions of how impressive these tools are. Some people say it's just AI is just derivative of everything on the internet and it's not, it's not really there yet. It's just a gimmick. Then you hear other people saying, um, not really. This is practically the hand of God coming down and helping me with my work. So the difference in those two opinions is the input. So basically when you hear people naysaying AI, just know that they don't know how to use AI and you're going to know how to use AI. Basically, you have a choice. There's going to be people that get really mad at this technology because they're afraid of change, and there's going to be people like us in this group that are excited, like, hey, we can't change that this is happening. We can't change that this disruption and science is advancing. We can only roll with it, baby. We got to jump on the train or get left behind. So what this is doing is there's a ton of stuff under the hood. This is basically like the creative director and CEO of a major, major luxury brand. Insert any luxury brand that is global level in your mind, and this is going to help you strategize at that level. Basically, in terms of the image outputs, we've given it parameters to make sure that this is defaulting to image quality that is comparable to a Vogue magazine shoot or another fashion publication, just throwing out something that you would have heard of, and then shot on cameras that are the best cameras in the world, and also in alignment with the craftsmanship of the greatest luxury jewelry brands in the world. So that's all under the hood. It's all been trained on this. And then, of course, there's business frameworks that are bespoke to Jewelers Advantage that we've put under the hood as well. Uh, that'll help you across five key pillars of the business. That's product design, marketing, sales, production and operations, and finance. All of that's under the hood. Just wanted to touch on that briefly. There's so much more to that that I can't explain mainly because a lot of it's proprietary and the other side of it being that most jewelers don't really care about the technology you want to be creative and express yourself through your craft so that's what this tool helps you do you don't have to necessarily be a business expert you just have to have a dream and this will either fill in your gaps or amplify your strengths so without any further ado let me get into what i was actually getting at with this thread all right so at the top here this was a brand new thread i just wanted to start something basic as if Somebody got their hands on this and they had never played with AI before and they're just a regular jeweler that is just going to communicate with this thing like it's a regular person. As if you were communicating to a consultant like me, you would be able to say, this is what I'm basically trying to do. And then the AI is going to be your consultant in your pocket. So what I started with is I am working on a jewelry brand that has a concept built around jet setting lifestyle. Think Instagram, think travel, think planes, think Fly Emirates. This is an ultra high end brand for people who travel the world. Please give me 10 brand names aligned with this idea and a brief description about how the jet setter idea can be made unique with the name. So basically that translates to if we were going to make a jet setter high end of the market jewelry brand, but we want to make it unique and make it stand out in the market, give me 10 options for how I can even expand upon that one idea. So what Jewelers Advantage had to say about that was creating a brand name for a jewelry line that embodies the ultra high end jet setting lifestyle is an exciting endeavor. This concept resonates with a sense of luxury, exclusivity and adventure appealing to the sophisticated clientele who appreciates the finer aspects of global travel. So it's also talking to you like a luxury consultant. So let's just jump down. I'm not going to read everything word for word. That would take too long, but basically 10 really cool ideas We've got a number of cool ideas for how to even go about jet setter we have globique jewels we have voyage gems we have meridian elegance jet elite creations nomadic lux continental charms skyline silhouettes horizon heirlooms atlas allure and wanderlust ornaments feel free to take a screenshot of this if you would like you're going to see that there's a nuanced difference in how all of these brands can be presented for example with voyage it conveys an essence of travel and exploration the brand could feature collections inspired by different travel destinations celebrating the wanderlust of its clientele it sounds pretty compelling as a brand idea there was another one down here that i thought was cool skyline silhouettes inspired by the skylines of major cities this name suggests jewelry designs that capture the essence of urban elegance and dynamic spirit of a jet setter. 
So as you can see, it gets really versatile. We just had a brand new breakdown of a brand concept that you could take in any direction with what you want to do right from the offset. So basically I was thinking, let's go with Voyager gems. I thought that sounded cool and French. And I liked the idea of the wanderlust aspect for marketing on Instagram, for example. So what I said was help me develop the brand prism of the following across six areas of physique, personality, culture, self image, reflection, relationship provide three bullet points for each category. This is going to be loaded into the stock version that you get. So if you're not familiar with the brand Prism, do not worry about that right now. That is a Fortune 500 level branding framework for how like Starbucks or Nike or Cartier or Tiffany or Louis Vuitton, how they manage their brand perception. So that's gonna be built into the program so that you don't have to think like that. The AI can help you and eventually you'll get up to speed and learn. So. I went with Voyager Gems and just copied and pasted this text into here. Easy, copy paste. So it says developing the brand prism for Voyager Gems involves crafting a multifaceted identity that resonates with your target audience's values, aspirations, and lifestyle. Here's how the brand can be conceptualized across Capfer's six facets. Capfer is the professor that came up with the brand prism. So these are gonna be areas that are going to become important for you, physique, personality, culture, self-image, reflection, and relationship. All of these, we'll do a longer breakdown on brand prism later on, but all of these are what make up how your brand is perceived. So the physique is like your logo, personality is like the brand voice, culture is like what goes on behind the scenes at your company self-image would be what the customer perceives themselves as again i'll just go slow you can screenshot these let me just pop up to here if you want to screenshot one through three so be it it is done let me go down to four through six if you want to screenshot and review this later on beautiful so be it it is done and here we are so we've got everything aligned for what this brand is supposed to be this is going to help us divine design products and it is going to help us divine brand concept imagery as well. It's a little Freudian slip, but a beautiful one. So basically to keep it moving, create 10 product ideas for this brand, include a branded product name as well as brief description of the product. So basically, if you've seen any of my content recently, this is where it came from. So we were developing some ideas for Voyager Gems, and basically it's a matter of being a world traveler, jet setter lifestyle. So we've got the Sahara Sunburst Pendant, the Venetian Vista Bracelet, Himalayan Serenity Earrings, Amazonia Emerald Necklace, the Kyoto Cherry Blossom Ring, Tuscan Sunset Hoops, Aegean Wave Cuff, Parisian Twilight Brooch, Maasai Mara tribal necklace. I hope I got that right. And the Andean peak locket. So it's basically already coming up with product concepts in alignment with the brand prism and the brand story that you're trying to tell. And I know that this is taking me a little bit longer to explain, but this is getting generated in seconds. So when I input these inquiries to the tool, this is happening in mere moments. You're getting it back in under a minute. And here you go. You've already got a brand concept for Voyager and we've got 10 product names as well. So as for the people that are excited about the design element of this tool, we're getting into that right now. Bear in mind, design is only about one fifth of what this tool is focused on. There's a lot more to it. It's just that the visuals are dynamic. I get it. It's fun. You'll probably get sucked in and, and lose a whole day in here once you get the tool because it is fun. So basically what we did was all I said was create this product, copied and pasted this text. And then if you guys have seen me on social media, you've seen this image and it generated this on the first try. So as you can see in the thread, it, this is what came up. Sometimes it takes multiple tries to get what you want to taste, but you're the designer. You're the one that gets to curate. You get to curate based on your vision and think more like a creative director with a team of designers under you. That is the mentality that you're going to want to have when you get your hands on this. So basically it told us that this is the Sahara sunburst pendant designed as per your concept. This piece with its luxurious gold sunburst design and central amber stone. I guess you could use a citrine as well. Beautifully captures the essence of the Sahara Desert's golden dunes at sunrise. So I'm thinking let's take it one step further. 
write an e-commerce product description that is less than 200 words. We want to keep it short, then write a step-by-step -step list for how I can produce this piece because we're going to be able to sell this online and we need to be able to know how to make it, right? And or make sure that the people working with us are on the same page for the plan of how we're going to make it. Some of you have trouble with scale, as in scaling the business, removing yourself as a bottleneck. You need systems and processes to do that. And this is going to help you get there. We've already got an e-commerce description. I won't read the whole thing, but just to give you an idea of hearing the copy out loud, which is important from a sales perspective, we have the Sahara Sunburst Pendant. Embrace the warmth and majesty of the Sahara with our Sahara Sunburst Pendant. Crafted with precision, this exquisite pendant features a radiant gold sunburst design evoking the first light of dawn over the desert's golden dunes. Sounds like a prophecy. It's beautiful. So you can screenshot any of this if you want. I'll give, give it a brief pause. But basically, it's giving us the copy here and also some design philosophy input so that we can start thinking about what we want to do with this. From there, we've got the production steps. So it came down to design sketching, which we already have up here, and then deciding what the materials are going to be and everything through production, just to give you an idea of the sequence of action steps that you're going to be taking if you want to bring this into reality. So that's something to keep in mind. We could go on and on and on with different prompts about how you can use this and how you can budget for it and everything like that. Just in the interest of time and getting to kind of see a high level view of this thing, we're going to keep it moving. So next thing I wanted to do was I picked another product from up there, just simply copied and pasted. I guess it was Venetian Vista bracelet. So I would have done this. I would have thrown it down into this chat right here, message jewelers advantage. And then I would have put it here, create this product, Venetian Vista bracelet. And this is what I got first try. And this one was pretty incredible. So it's a, for those of you that like more craft beaded jewelry, glass beads, this looks to be a combination of some type of high quality silver and beads. So it'd be like basically like a high end since we're at the high end of the market with day gems. This is kind of like a Pandora piece. If it was imagined at the higher levels of the luxury market. So same process. I just did it again. In this case, I just wanted to try doing the same output just to show you guys that we have some versatility um, in the outputs with the copy. So write an e-commerce description that has less than 200 words, then write a step-by-step -step list of how I can produce this piece. So we have the Venetian Vista bracelet, discover the charm of Venice with our enchanting Venetian Vista bracelet. This exquisite piece captures the essence of Venetian artistry featuring a harmonious blend of intricately designed glass beads and finely crafted silver charms. I would say that's accurate. So think about how much you're going to save on copywriters. This is impeccable. Screenshot this. This is impeccable copywriting and it's definitely luxury copywriting. We're not selling a can of soda. We're not selling a vacuum cleaner. This is a luxury product and it's a luxury jewelry product and it's nailing it and it's nailing it. So you can save a little bit of money on Fiverr, putting together your products and your copy. As long as the AI knows your brand prism, you can pretty much keep all of your continuity and quality for all of your content across all channels social media, in terms of imagery, in terms of your e-commerce descriptions, about sections, planning photo shoots to stay on brand, everything like that. This isn't like an employee that wakes up after five hours of sleep and kind of misses the mark one day. This is going to hit the mark almost every time. And if it doesn't, you can just tell it to try again and you have another shot at what you're trying to do in, in mere seconds. So from a copy standpoint, it's incredible. Again, here is the production step. So it's even telling us glass bead selection, silver charm crafting. So the descriptions, when you ask for production steps, it's giving you bespoke step-by-step -step instructions for that piece. Bead and charm selection, stringing the bracelet, clasp attachment, and so on. So that's actually pretty amazing. You're going to get step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a piece 
that conceptually didn't exist minutes before. And it's going to know how to not only sell it on your e-com store, it's going to know how to help you make it and put it up on that e-com store. So then I ran into a little bit of an issue. I, I tried again, and this is going to be normal. So just to uh, present everyone with a situation that you should be ready for, it's like working with a human designer. Sometimes the human designer doesn't bat a thousand. So we've got the Himalayan Serenity earrings. I did the same thing. You don't have to scroll up. I copied and pasted Himalayan Serenity earrings in the description, and this is what it got me. So not terrible, not terrible. The gemstones look realistic. The sapphires look real, but the, the big kind of like elephant in the room is that, hey, how are we gonna do these mountains? Sometimes you're going to have to take these designs and say, hey, this is a good concept image, but if I love the overall design and I wanna work with it, I can, we can take it to the CAD operator and we'll change things around or just ask questions of how are we gonna get close to this? Maybe it'll be a little bit different. Maybe this would be an awesome photo pendant. Like if this was a photo of the mountains and then you had some type of enameling effect here and some gemstones, this is by no means a bad piece of jewelry. It's just, I was being picky and I figured you guys might look at this and say, that's a little weird. Maybe we should try again. So if you weren't going to do photo pendant with enamel and gemstones, and maybe you just want to get another look at the Himalayan Serenity earrings because the Himalayas are important to you. And for this collection, we really need to represent that part of the world correctly. Let's get it right. So I came down and I first did the e-commerce description. So elevate your elegance with the Himalayan serenity earrings, a masterpiece inspired by the majestic tranquility of the Himalayan peaks. These exquisite drop earrings feature serene blue sapphires and so on. So the copy is excellent again, but I was thinking, how do I achieve the mountain look on this piece? I just wanted to see how would I do it if I was gonna make it? You can screenshot this if you want, if you just want some new ideas. It was giving me some basic ideas. It didn't even talk about the photo pendant thing this time, but that's just an idea that you as a human can also adapt. You're collaborating with the technology. So then I decided ultimately try again. I don't like the mountains in the design. So it says, if you prefer to avoid a literal representation of mountains in the design of the Himalayan serenity earrings, focus instead on capturing the essence and colors of the Himalayan landscape. Here's an alternative approach. Okay, now we're talking. We got color representation. We want it to be simple and elegant. This is just the jeweler's advantage description of what you could do. More flowing lines, subtle gradients, refined detailing. So ultimately what it's talking about here, you can screenshot here as well. What it is talking about here is, what if we just want a piece that's inspired by the Himalayas? We don't literally want to be wearing the Himalayas, right? So that's what this is basically telling us we can do. And then I say, yes, combine all of those ideas in a new design. Notice that's one sentence. No extreme prompt engineering. I'm not saying do this, do that. If you're working with regular chat GPT and you don't like the output and it gives you some kind of crazy fantasy image, you're going to need to know what you're talking about when you're going to be the horse whisperer for the AI. Again, we've removed that because that's, that's a skill. That's going to take you a year to learn if you want to do that. Instead, you can use Jeweler's Advantage, write one sentence, and it'll give you this instead. So here is the redesigned image of the Himalayan Serenity Earrings, incorporating the ideas of elegance, simplicity, and the serene beauty of the Himalayas. It even gave us some Himalayas in the background. I think that this is much more on target, just with what I had in my head of what would be a good product to sell. Maybe we have a little enamel here. Again, you would communicate to a designer. They could throw this into something like matrix gold and start mapping the image and start recreating it that way. And then you can maybe opt for either enamel or it, maybe it's just texture on the silver or white gold and you decide to forego the blue leaves and just leave the diamonds and the blue sapphires. So that would be a great way to go with this. I've got a new e-commerce description in here. I just thought that would be cool. And I just wanted for continuity's sake, make sure everything matched up the right way. And because it only takes seconds, who cares? It's not hurting me to write two sentences much better do this. So that's the output that we got. Let's take this a step further. Say we've got a cool product like the Himalayan Serenity earrings, and we want to market it in a way beyond just 
a branded staged photo. Well, then we're talking about models and influencers, right? So my next inquiry was much better write an e-commerce description that is less than 200 words, then write a step-by-step -step plan for aligning with an influencer and staging a photo shoot for the piece. So like who's worked with a model before? Maybe you have, maybe you worked with somebody in your community, but like that seems to be a step above some people that are at a, just a particular level in their experience, or maybe they've just never thought that that was something they could do. And now it's something you can do. You're going to know exactly what to do and you're going to know exactly how to engage with them and even get concept imagery for bringing a shoot to life and getting everyone on the same page. So the influencer alignment and photo shoot plan talked about identifying suitable influencers. Again, you can screenshot this. This is going to be something that's like an easy, easy prompt to add in. We've got some of these that are just point and click as conversation starters that'll yield some of these outputs. If you want, you can always ask it to do it for yourself, but it's giving you the plan step-by-step -step for how to put together your photo shoot. So the cool part is after it's come up with the plan and we've got an idea of the collection or the piece, I'm saying create a concept image of what a sample photo from this shoot might look like. And here we go. So here is a concept image for a sample photo from the luxury jewelry photo shoot featuring the Himalayan Serenity earrings. Now bear in mind, it didn't like take those earrings and put it on this model. This is more kind of like lookbook vision board type work. If anyone out there in the airwaves loves vision boarding, you're going to love this tool because it can help you rapidly ideate what your brand needs to be and how you would approach a shoot doesn't really matter that the exact earrings aren't on this model yet. This is also, maybe if you're thinking about this with an open mind, oh, maybe there's a Himalayan collection. Maybe there's just, maybe there's not just one blue sapphire earring for my Himalayas. Maybe there's pendants that go with it too. Point is, it's giving you a model in luxury attire with a luxury backdrop. That is just my, my brief thing into branding and photo shoots and influencers. You're going to be able to go down that rabbit hole like crazy. This is just a brief jump off point to start getting an idea of if you wanted to brand a collection or start coming up with marketing concepts for a segment of your offerings, you'd be able to start doing that with just, uh, again, one sentence, create a concept image of what a sample photo shoot from this shoot would look like. And yeah, you see it, wonderful. So then I ran into another situation that I wanted to try. I noticed something here that I thought would be interesting. So Amazonia Emerald Necklace. Again, I just copied and pasted it. And something told me I wanted to test this one because the Amazon is beautiful. We've already done the Sahara. So why shouldn't the sands from the Sahara come over to the Amazon and nourish the Amazon like it does in real life? So this is what I got and it's a little crazy. Right? So you guys be ready to run into some of this stuff sometimes, but then also be ready to assess why it happened. Here is the image of the Amazonia Emerald earrings designed as per your concept. This is a little crazy guys. I don't know if I want to make this piece with the moss and leaves. Granted, if you were commissioned for some type of uh, movie wardrobe, might be a different story. There, there's not, or maybe if you're an art jeweler and these are ceramic or something like that, or maybe they're like painted aluminum or something. Like there's people that would make this piece and maybe this could be a million dollar auction piece, but maybe you don't also want to sell it on an e-com store because it probably doesn't have product market fit with a broad, broad range of the market. So I like the gold leaves. I like the gemstones. So I was looking at this and then I realized also a lush, vibrant necklace showcasing a cascade of emeralds and small gold leaves, capturing the essence of the Amazon rainforest ver verdant canopy. Technically speaking, guys, we can't get mad at the AI because it kind of followed the directions here. Okay, so you got to be ready at, at some points. So you can feed in the inputs and maybe you need to edit the inputs or you just put them in and see what happens. And maybe you get a cool art piece like this and maybe you have to try again. I said, try again. I like the gold leaves and the green gemstones, but not the actual plants in the image. So then it kind of didn't listen which is going to happen every once in a while because once it's been primed with an idea, sometimes it's hard to get it off the train tracks. So you're just going to have to be ready to, to turn on a dime. But the beauty of it is you're not paying for renders and it's, you're only losing minutes 
to get designs and play with them. So sometimes it takes a little iteration and you need to be patient and also know what you want. Okay. I just came and said, no more leaves, right? Alternative ideas for Amazonia emerald necklace. The reason I did that was because with the way the description had been framed, maybe it was just going to be too much for the AI to reconcile because it's combining creative ideas the same way a human designer does. So like anytime you work with the power of three and combine three ideas in one thing, that's the same thing that happens with human creativity. You're just doing it faster. So no more leaves. I just wanted to get a different look. Keep with the Amazon thing. Give me a couple of other ideas. It gave me 10 more ideas or six, excuse me, six more ideas. So I got six more solid ideas talking about designs and features of what the piece would be. Feel free to screenshot this. You can always throw this in to regular chat GPT and see if it gives you more crazy Amazon art jewelry, or we can just scroll down and see what it gave us this time. I picked the Emerald Cascade necklace. This time it got us much more in the realm of reality. Still looking very expensive, probably not everyday casual wear, but a beautiful piece nonetheless, and we're starting to get closer. Then I said, try again the same basic idea, but with less gemstones and stage the piece on a mannequin. Boom. Now we've got something that's pretty realistic high jewelry. In the realm of lab diamonds, this could be very interesting or lab gemstones. Emerald was the first lab gemstone. So that's kind of cool. Maybe this is more evening where maybe you're going to be good at networking and getting it on an eco-friendly celebrity voice and get your piece on the red carpet or something like that. This would be how you start conceptualizing that type of piece. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, the influencer thing was cool before. Describe how we would stage an influencer photo shoot for the Amazonia collection. Again, it's giving us ideas for the Amazonia collection. We'll just move through this. This is just to give you an idea. It's always easier to plan what you're actually going to go out and do. Like, again, this isn't just a design tool. This is an action tool. It's making it so you can see and visualize what is going to happen and then also allow you to strategically plan out the steps to go bring this into reality. That's why we're all here is to make this real. So we got this plan and create a concept image of the shoot. And this is my Amazonia collection concept image. So we've got our model. She's dressed in luxury, chic Amazonian stuff. And we've even got a little bit of an idea of what the collection would start to come together to look like and what the background could be for staging and, and so on. So we've got a, an idea of what this could be. So then I said, write an e-com description for the Amazonia collection, then provide 10 more products that could be in this collection. So you can use this to kind of cycle through ideas and then at any given point, jump off and more or less shoot a shotgun spray to create more ideas as offshoots of any one particular thread that you want to pull, which is super cool. So from here, we found our way to, hey, this Amazonia thing could be kind of cool. And now we've got lots and lots of ideas for products for the Amazonia collection. That's 10 here. There were six above too before on top of the first one. So that's 17 different Amazonian ideas that I could, in theory, pop back into here, message jewelers advantage and develop a whole collection in less than an hour. That's being conservative. It'd be easily less than an hour. You'd have concept images for an entire collection for your brand. So then I picked one more just because I wanted to see. I just thought a tiara might be kind of cool to finish things up. And we got this majestic tiara embellished with a variety of gemstones designed to represent the richness and diversity of the rainforest. This to me looks more like a brand type image. You'd have to go in and probably remove some of this stuff um, with a graphic designer. So humans are still relevant. This is, this is not replacing humans. It's just making us faster, better, smarter, faster, better, smarter. Okay. So this is brand storytelling for an Amazonia collection. This could be a cool thing for social media, perhaps, or just something to guide your team. So that's what I got for you today. Keep an eye on this channel. We're going to put out a lot more tutorials. That was just a very, very basic, less than 1% view of what this is. There's a lot under the hood. There's a lot to come to understand. But basically, bear in mind that as a closing note, AI is an amplifier. It's an amplifier for human consciousness. 
So the tool is only as complex as your own mental frame of reference on the industry, your own mental model of the industry and what you're trying to create. And it can 10 X you, it can 100 X you in an area that you have deep, deep domain expertise. So that's the end of this presentation. We're going to have a lot more coming your way. This again, less than 1% of what this can do. I just wanted to give people a basic idea of what this is going to reveal in their own business, what it's going to create as an opportunity for you as a small business owner and founder. It's making it so that you have to take everything that you thought was a limit for you and throw it out the window because everything that you thought was not possible is no longer real. And with that, I bid you adieu for now. Thank you for tuning in to Jewelers Advantage and I will see you in the next one.